Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the most iconic horror games out there. And after creating FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 in Scratch, a lot of you have been asking for me to make FNAF 3. And so today we will be making FNAF 3 in Scratch, but in the past, I had only focused on night one. So ladies and gentlemen, this time we will remake all five nights. Also, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on that later. Now, this isn't going to be easy since FNAF 3 introduces some brand new unique challenges such as audio and video systems. And this time, Springtrap is introduced as the main villain. He is the only animatronic who can truly hurt you. There are also phantom animatronics and mini games, but we will be focusing on the core gameplay with Springtrap in this remake. Also, side note, the FNAF 1 remake had gotten banned on scratch and somehow the fnaf 2 remake is still up last time i mentioned the scratch mods couldn't stop me and <laughs> i guess they listened all right the plan as always is to start with the main menu then we will set up the main cameras move on to the cameras in the vents program spring traps movement throughout the game at the co vent button and reboot screens and finally the common ending we will set up the basics first and then add the code to transition between the finites at the end Let's set the mood right by recreating the exact main menu from FNAF 3 first. So, we'll animate the Springtrap costume to randomly switch for an eerie disorienting effect. Then we set up the main menu buttons to animate when pressed, start night 1, and show the newspaper. Let's make this more visually appealing by adding some creepy static in the background. We also don't want a plain level load, so we will give the newspaper a transition to ease us into the game. Now, the main menu isn't complete until we upload the music for that sweet spooky ambience background music. Next, we will upload the title along with the level start sound for the first night. And now we move on to the office. We set up the office with the ability of shifting the view according to the player's X move input like we did in the previous videos to make the player actually be able to look left and right. And of course, we have to animate the fan and add its constant ominous whirring sound. Like how could we forget this? So now we have the scary menu screen that launches into the first night starting the game. So far going great. Now it's time to make the button that pops up the camera interface in and out of the view and create the actual camera interface. And now we have a camera menu. Now we add the all important map that the player interacts with throughout the game. Notice that the introduction of vents in FNAF 3 means that we have to toggle between the main map and the vent map to select between the newly added vent cameras. We will also add a static overlay and sound for some juice. After that, we begin the slow and painful process of adding a button for each camera and making sure that the corresponding room views show up on each click. And we do the same for the vent cameras. So now all the cameras are working it's actually starting to look like a game now let's make sure that spring trap actually shows up in the camera when the players click on the camera we add an internal variable tracking spring traps location that we will check whether it matches the index of the camera that was clicked so we get this really long if else loop to do this I wish there was a better way to do this, but yeah. hey, uh, this is scratch. We will add the AI to control spring traps location using the variable we just made. Time to add a map toggle button to switch between the vent cams and main room cams. Let's see what we've got so far. Of course, we need to add the timer to get the tension that FNAF is known for. When the time counts down fully, we set the night over broadcast in scratch to move the state of the game. Here's how the hours pass by. Now we get to the fun part, how Springtrap will move throughout the game. We will also set two jump scares, one from the room to the player's left and another through the vent on the player's right. But before we continue, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're getting into game development with Scratch, you already know how fun it is to create your own games and try out different game engines. But having a website can help you share your projects with even more people. Squarespace makes it easy to build your website with no coding needed. With their blue AI tool, I made a portfolio site in just 15 minutes to show off my projects. Their templates are super flexible so you can make your website look exactly how you want and if you want to sell anything like fan made merch or plushies, Squarespace has easy payment options, credit card, PayPal, 
or Apple Pay. So if you're thinking about a website for your games or to make yourself a portfolio, go to squarespace.com slash usmandev for a free trial and to save 10% off your first website or domain. So how does Springtrap's movement actually work? With the focus on reaching the player's office, which is room one, he generally starts in the room farthest from the office, moving closer as the nights progress. On night two, he appears around rooms nine or 10 and moves directly towards the office to rooms eight and seven, sometimes using vents randomly. By night three, his path becomes less predictable, moving more freely between rooms nine, eight, seven, with a slightly increased chance of entering the vents if his direct route is disrupted. On night four, his aggression spikes. He shifts quickly between rooms and uses vents, especially those connected to room seven and room five, requiring the player to rely more on sealing the vents. By night five, Springtrap is at the most erratic, ignoring most audio lures and using the shortest vent paths to the office, especially from rooms five and seven. This requires the player to monitor him closely and quickly seal the vents to prevent his final approach. So getting into the actual implementation, the player is just going to get accustomed to the controls. From the second night and beyond, we regularly place Springtrap in the vents randomly every 7 to 13 seconds. We also set the Springtrap location variable to a random value from 11 to 15 which corresponds to the vent cameras. If the vents are sealed, we spawn Springtrap back to either room 8 9 or 10. If the vents are open, we jump scare the player with the second vent scare jump scare based on the player's X location in the office and whether the camera feed is up. And if Springtrap ends up in rooms 10, 9, 7, 5, or 2, we send him back to the vent with a probability of 1 in 15, which is decided by a random number picker. Else, with each subsequent loop, Springtrap moves closer and closer to the player until he finally hits them with the first jump scare. Here, we will also add the button to seal the vents with a cool sound effect. We are almost at the finish line. We can now set up both the jump scares logic. Staying true to the game, we also add the phone call to play during the start of the game. You can't forget this guy's voice. Next, we add the important system reboot screen. Finally, it's time to set up the end of the game. First, let's add the 6 a.m. sound that all the FNAF players have come to love. If we are at the end of the last night, we show the ending or else we increment the night counter to go to the next one. And so after going through so many bugs and debugging, we finally have the final product. Hey, hey, glad you came back for another night. Keep an eye on things, and we'll try to have something new for you tomorrow night. And subscribe to see more horror game remakes.